Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 171. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we're here for the 169 kilometers. Nice. Of Suzuka circuit. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. So we got 29 laps. I'm going to be taking the Audi R8 from 2008. So let's get going. Who the fuck eats biscuits and then their mouth gets dry? <laughs> I mean, okay, I don't mean it in that way. Like, oh, I eat a biscuit and my mouth gets dry. Oh, fuck this. No, I mean it like... I don't want to eat something that's drier than the Sahara fucking desert. If I wanted to eat something that had the moisture content of a fucking handful of sand, then I'd eat a handful of sand. You know. Like, no. I think I believe this is the V8 version of the R8 rather than the V10, and it sounds so much better. I I don't mind cookies though, but shit. I wasn't looking at my car. No dive. I was bullied. I was bullied too. Right, let's get some of this distance back. Whoa! That grass is sticky. <laughs> Skill issue. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but yeah. It's, um, I'm not a fan of biscuits. Like, if I, if I want to have some, I'll have a cookie. Because cookies are soft and gooey and whatnot. I, do you, the one thing that pisses me off, right, is when companies make cookies that they overbake, they end up being dry as hell, and they call cookies. Those are not cookies, those are biscuits. Biscuits are these hard, sweet treat things. Right, they're biscuits. If I want a cookie, yeah, sort of like shortbread biscuits. Although, to be fair, I like shortbreads. I do like shortbreads. But the problem with people that make cook, especially those bags of like cookies, and they're sold as like cookies, but they're just. No. If, if I want to. Right, I loved when I went to college. I used to go to the Sainsbury's that was in our town centre. It's gone now, which sucks. But I would go to Sainsbury's and get a packet of cookies because they were freshly baked and they were always fucking soft. Yeah, you proper cookies that are soft, that have gooey chocolate in them and whatnot. The edges aren't crispy. They're just soft cookies. I like soft cookies. That sounds really bad out of context. But, <laughs> that is a cookie. Anyone that makes, I like when Americans go, oh, you Brits, you call cookies biscuits. No, we don't. We still call cookies cookies. It's just, we also make really dry versions of cookies called biscuits. <laughs> Zeno, I know that's you typing the hundred. <laughs> Gloves is soft, for fuck's sake. Fuck's sake, I'm not gonna live that one down. Well, time to die. 
So basically, on stream, if you're on mobile, so you use the mobile app, uh, it sort of pops up a little reaction on the video feed. Uh, if you're looking at the chat on desktop, it will pop up a little reaction on the chat. So I can see on the chat every reaction when people press those buttons. Which I love that feature. Because then it means that you can spam all these different reactions and I can see them. It's pretty cool. I'm in an Audi! I'm in an Audi. I'm in an Audi. I'm in a motherfucking motherfucking Audi. I'm in an Audi. I'm in an Audi. I'm in a motherfucking motherfucking Audi. I'm in an Audi. I'm in an Audi. I knew someone who used to call Audi Audi. They used to say Audi. I'm gonna go and drive an Audi R8. Who says Audi? Yeah, Audi. Audi. No, this is the cheap Hurricane. This is the cheap Hurricane. But this is before they started making the cheap Hurricane. Because this one has a V8. So this was an original car. This model of the R8. The V10 model, that was the cheap Hurricane. Because it had the same engine that was in the Hurricane. Because that had a V10. <laughs> cheap Gallardo. Was it the Gallardo as well? Oh yeah, because the 2010 one was the Gallardo, wasn't it? And then it was the other Audi R8, the newer one, was the Hurricane. Yeah. The 20... Uh, was it the 2017 R8? Was the cheap Hurricane. And then the... Well, this definitely wasn't the Gallardo, because again, this has a V8 engine in it. They wouldn't put a V8 in a Lambo. They wouldn't ever be caught dead putting a V8 in a Lambo. Even the Revuelto, isn't that a V12 with electric motors? It's scissor Lambo doors for the gig. Do you know, I prefer the sound of the V8 version of the R8 to the V10. I think this is a better Audi. 100%. This is a much better car. That would be fly as fuck, to be fair. An R8 with scissor doors would be awesome. Also, I, I'm i trying to think if I recognise the Hurricane Tech. Does Shmi have one? Like, he has a purple, like a purpley pink Hurricane Technica, right? What the fuck, Stream Elements bot? Why are you now running? What happened? Did my stream cut out? No. What? I'm confused. Did Stream Elements crash? No. St what? I'm confused. So yeah, once we hit that goal at the top, that super chat goal, I will buy a brand new capture card for my setup. So that I can improve how the quality of the gameplay looks. Because I think I'm bottlenecked by my capture card at the moment. Because I think it own I don't think it does any more than, um, what's it called, 15 or 20 kilobits, 20,000 kilobits.
because of the old interfaces running. So it would be nice to have one that goes directly in the motherboard that could potentially look better. And I want to try and do that but before I start Motorsport 4. But I definitely need it by Horizon 1. So I'm looking I'm looking to get some upgrades. Yeah. I'll agree with you on that one. I ain't eating until the stream finishes as well. Because I'm going to cook up some chicken fillets. And I'm going to stick them in a wrap. My, my quick and easy comfort food is chucking some chicken fillets in the air fryer. Cutting them up and then sticking them in a wrap with some sauce. Like, that's quick and easy. I don't have to do anything other than literally slap it in a wrap and wrap it up. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm very much a food guy, as you can probably tell. I'm quite big. But, like, like I was saying earlier, before uh, I actually started the stream, um, when Pandy joined... Like, even, even though I'm quite big and I would like to lose some weight, I'm actually the happiest with how I look now than I've ever been. Um, just because of the fact that I don't look like a goofy fuck anymore. <laughs> I just act like a goofy fuck. No matter how much I eat, I'm about as fat as a literal twig. I mean, I used to be like that. I used to eat a lot of food, but I also used to run away from, like, teachers and take the piss and get a lot of exercise. So when I ate a lot, it didn't really matter too much. And then I did this thing called uh, going to college and uh, started behaving and uh, stopped running away from teachers and uh, stopped exercise and stopped doing PE, and ate a lot, and became fat. <laughs> That's just how it rolls. That's how the cookie crumbles. It's funny. It's funny because it's true. Oh yeah, exercise is good for you. Would you ever? Bing bong, but a bing bong bong, but a bing bong, but a bing bong bong. Push the line. See that hairpin? You literally cannot accelerate at all. It tastes my mind. Push the line, push the line. Whoa! See the rear wheel slipping out a little bit there. See, I am extremely used to Formula 1 handling mechanics right now. Like, F1 23 is one of the best Formula 1 games that has been released in a long time. It's almost been a month since it came out. And I've been playing it so much, I've gotten, like, 70 hours in it. Almost. Like, that's unreal. 
so I'll take it. They will bring me down. Put these shackles on. Push, push, push the line. Slide him around the corners as well. One thing I think Gran Turismo could really do with um, to become a really good like car collector game is to add multiple models of cars. Like the problem is when you look at Gran Turismo Five and Six, the method that they used was fine. The get cars looked really good, so they should do the same for Gran Turismo Eight gonna be get loads of cars in the game get different versions of the model obviously if they're like exactly the same but say for example this r8 and the newer r8 put them all under like audi r8 and have like an r8 section its own bit rather than having a huge list of models which people didn't like you go to the Audi dealership and they show you like 50 different cars. Pointless. Oh, sad news, chat. Sad news. The last Ford Fiesta finally went across the um, production line. The last Ford Fiesta has that has ever been made has been made there will be no more Ford Fiestas the Ford Fiesta is dead now officially dead Sag That was a good corner. going really well. Welcome everyone. Welcome everybody. Hope you're, hopefully you're all enjoying the stream. And uh, if you are, feel free to uh, drop a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. Ford Fiesta's got replaced by the electric Mustang SUV. Uh, no. I don't know what that Mustang SUV... The Fiesta got replaced by the Puma. So the Ford Puma is the replacement. They basically took the Ford Cougar, which um, was their sort of family SUV thing. And then they took the Ford Fiesta, two cars that probably shouldn't meet, uh, combined them, made the Puma, and now the Puma's replaced it. Which is why the Puma's in the rally. Because they want to try and sell the Puma. They basically killed off the Fiesta because they wanted a slightly bigger hatchback. And they've also killed off the Cougar as well. So rather than having like a big family hatchback and a little hatchback, they've gone for a medium sized hatchback. It's very dumb. 
Like, don't get me wrong, I, I actually quite like the look of the Puma. I'll be 100% honest. It, it, it's grown on me a lot. But, like, why? That just reminds me of Colin McRae, that song, because I saw it was the song that they used on the uh, trivia video in Dirt 2. Yeah, Dirt 2. I was thinking, was it Dirt 2 or Dirt 3? Dirt 2. Huge fan of, um, what's it called? Dirt 2. Dead 2 is one of my fav all time childhood favourite racing games. I love that game. Also, this song is brilliant. GT and Renault had a baby. Mm. I can see it in the headlights. But the shit... Mm. I think the only part that sort of makes sense probably is the headlights, but every Ford had that. Um... Mm. I, I don't think it's the Ford GT. I'll definitely say the Renault reference, though. It does have a good hint of Re Renault in it, especially with the shape of the car. I definitely agree with that. But yeah, I, I don't see any of the Ford GT in it. Like, the taillights don't match, the exhausts don't match. There's... The only thing that probably matches is the fact that it's got a Ford badge. But it, it is a, it's a huge mix of the Cougar and the um, Fiesta because they obviously they killed off the full focus as well they killed off the focus to make the Fiesta a bigger hatchback oil splashed on my arm for fuck's sake casual burn that is a casual burn <laughs> but yeah the um, what's it called the Ford focus the focus got cancelled because the Fiesta was becoming bigger and bigger. And obviously the point of the focus was to be a bigger hatchback and the Fiesta was supposed to be this really tiny hatchback. And obviously now the Fiesta's bigger. The Fiesta's taken the place of the focus. So there's no point in the Ford Focus anymore. The Ford Fiesta has now been replaced by a bigger hatchback. So there's no point in the Fiesta while the Puma exists, and eventually, they're just gonna make a giant SUV. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, so the, the Ford GT headlights, when they made the Ford GT, the headlights, they pretty much used it on every car. They used that design. So, the headlights, um, pretty much the same uh, especially when it um, the Fiesta has the same headlights um, I think the Cougar had the same headlights as well the last version of the Cougar had the same headlights um, 
Yeah. They basically made a really nice pair of headlights for the Ford GT and then went, Do you know what? We'll use it for everything. And now the Ford GT looks a bit... Because every other car that they have has the same headlights. It's the same with... Um, I can't even think of a good example, to be honest. I don't know. Never break the chain. McLaren F1 tail lights. I can't even think what the F1's tail lights were. Were they just round bulbs, like? Is it not in Motorsport 7? Because I know it was in Motorsport 6. They were taillights from a bus. Oh my god. That's unbelievable. At least it makes it cheap for repairs then, if they go out. I around. They don't. I don't even know if Ford do motorsport anymore. They just do NASCAR, right? Which again, the NASCAR they do with the Mondeo. I'm hungry. I might have to cook something. Or order a pizza. I'll probably end up just ordering a pizza. Porto's GT4, but not GTE, GTD. Yeah. Oh gosh. Definitely got to eat something. Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, we are... Almost halfway through this race. We're halfway through our fuel, so we will have to pit. And uh, hopefully, by the time we finish... I'm going to have some nice warm chicken to eat. Stick it on a plate, put some fucking barbecue sauce with it, and eat it. Nom nom nom. Say goodbye. I haven't got any wraps at the moment, so I'm literally just eating giant chicken nuggets. Hence why I put two boxes in. Because one wouldn't have been enough to just eat on its own. I know, not healthy, but I don't care. I want to be happy too, you know. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's fucking funny. Yeah, how am I supposed to buy some wraps while I'm streaming? So by the time I finish this, it will have taken about three hours to do two races. But hopefully the last four races, it will take me five hours. And I'll be able to finish it about 10 o'clock. Because I... I need to finish before 10 today. Um, because if I finish after that time, um, well, I'm fucked. I gotta do some washing up. So I gotta put some clothes, some clothing items into the washing machine, right? I need to put some clothing items into the washing machine. How the hell do you stream for so long? Quite fucking easily. You know how you can sit in game and play Gran Turismo 7 for quite a long time? Uh, it's just that, but I... I mean, I just talk. I see a message pop up on my screen and I start talking. Granted, when I did this 14 hour stream, that was quite tiring. But that was because I wasn't able to lie down. Normally when I game, I lie down and have breaks. Between. Or if I'm uncomfortable, I'll sort of lay down on my bed for a bit, I'll sit in my chair for a bit, whatnot. Obviously, when you're streaming, you can't do that. You just have to sit in your chair. And that can be a bit uncomfortable and a bit annoying. Especially the fact that I don't sit in my chair properly either. So, that doesn't help. Do, 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 do. Because you're supposed to sit back like this. Have it lean all the way back. But this looks really uncomfortable and awkward, so I sit like this. Because this is less uncomfortable. My mouth will get dry if I talk this much. Oh yeah, my mouth does get dry. That's why I drink a lot. And I also put a lot of caffeine in what I drink, so I can keep talking like this. <laughs> Though, to be fair, I, I've been drinking way too much energy drinks lately. I need to bring it back down. Because I've been drinking a lot of it. I should probably put that in the fridge. Put it in. I, I've got bottles of Coke here. They're worth 1.2 million. No. <laughs> Not that kind of Coke. Uh, I got um, Coke Zero. Cherry. To addict. Yeah, I am a little bit addicted, but yeah, it is a good show actually. But I've just sort of been using it whilst I've been at work, and then yeah. But to be fair, uh, it was similar with uh, the effect that caffeine has on someone with ADHD is similar to um, ADHD meds, which is why they say you shouldn't have energy drinks when you have ADHD meds, because it messes with the effect of the ADHD meds that you have in your system. Um, so by technicality, for about 12 years of my life, I was already using something similar to caffeine as a crutch in my life. So, yeah, fun. <laughs> Withdrawal symptoms waiting. To be fair, even when I, because I can have like two energy drinks a day and be like what I am now. And then I'll go to the next day and I'll have nothing the day after that and have nothing and then have two for like three days in a row and then have nothing I have ADHD yeah I don't know what HD is but the doctor said I got 80 of them <laughs> that's such a good move yeah so 
I've got the the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And I've also got the tism. So double whammy. Oh you fuck. Fuck 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 fuck. I've got 80 HDs, I know, I'm so lucky. Because they are perceived as rowdy and rambunctious, one time for the print on my downfall. <laughs> I love that song so much. That is such a good song, Mozina. I love that. <laughs> Bro has the unlimited HD glitch. Come to Shine by ASAP Rocky. What's the ASAP Rocky song? Um, Praise the Lord, that's it. Praise the Lord is such a good song. I came, I saw, I came, I saw, I praise the Lord, the break the law, I take my time and take. I don't know. That's a good song, though. Ultra HD 41 by 10 resolution 24K. Damn. That's some fucking ultra wide fucking bullshit there. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having an ultra wide monitor. But I feel like it'd be fucking pointless. Like, when you look at websites, they're built based off of a portrait orientation anyway, so ultra wide just fucks them up. You can't watch... The only thing would be for, like, cinematic movies. And even then, some Marvel films, right? For example, Guardians... Of I didn't notice this, and it really threw me off when I eventually spotted it. But there are some scenes in Guardians of the Galaxy that is filmed in... Um... Fucking... 16 by 9 ratio, and then some's filmed in 21 by 9. Is it 21 by 9? The blank bars at the top and the bottom. But some of it is in normal, just widescreen, 16 by 9 ratio. Which is like, why the fuck are you swapping between the two ratios? Just fucking have the whole film at one ratio. So even then, some of those films wouldn't work on an ultra wide. It's just ripped. I, I I couldn't. My chain Dior, my pants velour. Create, explore, expand, I'm cool. Such a such a good song. I'll be honest though, v VR um, is the future of gaming, hundred percent. It's the future, but we just need to get it more accessible. It's going to be the future. Like, let's be real, racing games are a million times better in VR. There are some really good fitness games in VR. First person shooters, I've played so many Call of Duties and none of them were as fun as when I played Contractors and Pavlov, because those were so much fun. In terms of excitement, and gameplay, virtual reality is 
the future. Hands down. But the problem is, we need VR to... You know when they announced the Quest Pro, right? And it looked like a pair of glasses? Originally, but it's just shit. I, I would love for them to make something as simple as a pair of glasses. I, I know it's a, a crude example of it. But you know those, you know swimming goggles? How when you put them on, they sort of just suction around your eyes? Something similar to that, but just like, you put them on and these, they go around your eyes, which block out everything. And you've got these lenses that go obviously close to your eyes and you can see. 120 degrees around you, field of view, something like that. Yeah, Gran Turismo 7 is quite possibly one of the best games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you have to make sure you've also got... Um, thingy. IMSA. IMSA, is that the... Oh, uh, what is IMSA? I know it's an American racing championship. I'm trying to remember what it is. I don't think I can't remember. GT, GT3 stuff. Uh, no, I don't, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I don't really watch. It's a sponsor of ACC. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm not really a fan of. I think GT3 racing is pretty cool. But there's just not the excitement factor. I've, I've watched Formula One and I've watched those kind of races that... It, it's very difficult to get into a series of motorsport. Um, if you don't relate to a driver or if you don't have a favorite driver or something like that. So Formula One... Obviously, you, it's the same with any series, but you have to watch a lot of it before you start getting a favorite driver. Even when I was watching NASCAR, like, I had already picked a favorite driver because I had watched um, that Bubba Wallace documentary on Netflix. So I, I, I sort of just watched a little bit of NASCAR and was sort of rooting for him because I've seen stuff of him. It's an easy way to start in enjoying it if you're rooting for one driver. When I was started watching WRC, I started rooting for Calais Rompera because of the fact he was doing well in the series and he was 21 years old. So he was doing a phenomenal job of basically becoming the youngest world champion and he did that. So I was very excited to watch WRC. This year, I'm still supporting Calais Robin Perra. I want Calais to win. Um, American World... Ah, that's it. Yeah, the, I, I was thinking... Because I was thinking it was an endurance-based thing, but I couldn't tell whether it was, like, an IndyCar kind of thing, or... Because the eye was throwing me off. I was thinking it was, like, IndyCar. I stood for IndyCar. But yeah, yeah, I know what you mean now. Because they, they have like the Cadillacs and whatnot, don't they? They have like Cadillac and uh, Chevrolet as well, don't they? They go around like Road America and all those tracks. I will say hands down that America and their motorsport is extremely confusing. Because of the fact everything confuses. It's confusing. American cars are phenomenal cars, but they are built solely for American tracks a lot of the time. Like, you... I have found it extremely difficult. Like, European cars work really well around European tracks. And Japanese cars work really well around Japanese tracks because they're designed... 
but American tracks and American cars are just so different. It's exciting. Don't get me wrong. I love it because they are so different in terms of the, the formula. You go to an American track and it, it feels completely different to a European track or a Japanese track. Like... But American cars, they just... They're so different. And they're so cool as well. Same with European cars as well. Like... I do find that American cars aren't designed with cornering ability in mind nearly as much as European cars are. But again, that's that's part of the charm of American cars. It's just, let's stick a load of power in this car and see what it does. <laughs> I think it's fucking cool. How far behind is the car behind? Because I think I might pit. 15 seconds. Uh, we'll do it. Dive in. Because I think all the other cars are going to pit as well. And if not, then I've just made the biggest mistake ever and I fucked up. I love this though. Car parks up and then all of a sudden it's good. Cadillac, Acura, Porsche, BMW are the prototype. I find it really weird that Porsche and BMW are in American WEC. Like, yeah, good thing pit lane penalties aren't a thing in this game. Jesus Christ. The game just threw me out wherever it wanted to. But yeah, I thought Porsche and BMW would be sort of more favoured towards the WEC rather than the American version. Like, I, th I thought American would have majority American manufacturers, but the only American manufacturer there is Cadillac. Acura is not American, it is just the American name for a Japanese company. It's the same with, like, Walkers in the UK. Walkers is the UK name of Lay's, basically. Lay's chips. So, pretty much, only one company there is truly American. And the rest of them are from different countries. Well, Peugeot had, uh, has a prototype car in this game as well. So they've had prototype cars all in previous years as well. LMP2 and LMP3 along with two GC3 classes. Fair enough. That's pretty cool. I'm still going to stick with my WRC though. Because the amount of stuff in a... Like... If you look at, um, what is it, 24-hour Le Mans and whatnot, like these world endurance races, they don't do many of them. They'll do, I think, it, is it eight or nine rounds? Right, and you think in, during Le Mans, which is one of the longest ones, obviously 24-hour race, I think they do Spa as well, which is another 24-hour. These 24-hour races... Ah, I'm back in first, but I messed that up big time. Oh, I got away with that, just about. Um, yeah, when it comes to... Say, Le Mans, you've got 24 hours of racing, along with a qualifying and maybe some practice. One single WRC weekend gives you around about again 24 it's 12 hours for the first two days so 12 hours 12 hours 24 yeah 
give or take a couple of breaks between it, there's about 20 hours of racing every single rally weekend. And they do 13 rallies. So you've got 20 hours plus times 13. And then they have the ERC, which has about 14 to 16 hours of rallying, which has eight rounds. So let's say that's about 400 hours of rallying. The WEC couldn't even get close to that. Even Formula One, with all the amount of rounds that it gets, can't even get close to that much racing content at all. Like, there's so much in rallying. And on top of that, the rally... I, I will always say this, and a lot of people will agree as well, that rally drivers are the most talented drivers in the world. Hands down. They are the most talented drivers. They are the fastest drivers, they are the most talented because they can control cars on different surfaces with all sorts of different corners, different terrain changes and everything. They are the most talented drivers in the world. Formula One have some of the best racers because they can race against each other. But they're definitely not the best drivers. Like, they're not the best that can control a car. They're just able to use their car and overtake each other and race each other. And then... People who are in, say, the World Endurance Championships are some of the best endurance drivers. They're able to race these cars and drive long distances. But I, I could guarantee you, if you were to put, say, a WRC driver or a Formula One driver in a World Endurance Championship car and say, go as fast as you can, obviously they'd need practice because it would be a completely different car but they would quite easily be able to beat them because they are the best drivers in the world. But obviously, you put a rally driver in a 24-hour Le Mans, they'll, they'll be dead within half an hour because of the fact... The longest stage I think they've done this year was about 35 minutes of rallying, which obviously is insane, but, you know, doing 30 minutes of racing or 20 minutes, 15, 10 minutes of racing, like that, in terms of endurance, there's no endurance at all. So, my food's finished, by the way. It just finished cooking. So, I'm going to eat it after this race. But it's going to stay in the air fryer and just smell good. I'm going to leave it in there so it finish, finishes cooking because I didn't do it for the full time. But yeah, rally drivers are just phenomenal. Like, they're in a league of their own in terms of how good they are. I'd love for them to add Rallycross. Rallycross is a good second place, to be fair, um, because they can also drive on multiple platforms whilst racing against other cars. But the difference is they're quite wide open tracks. They've got a lot of room for error. Whereas rallying has little to no room for error. Oh yeah, 24 hours of Nürburgring as well. That's something spectacular as well. I'd say 24 hours of Nürburgring is probably the most difficult race. What about the people who race the Isle of Man TT? Yeah, I'd say that's quite a difficult one, but again, when it when it comes to the Isle of Man TT, it 
the roads are still quite wide. Granted, they are much now. I'd say that's probably quite high up on challenges. But when you think about it, Isle of Man TT, you, you've got this bike, you're in control of the bike, and you're racing it along tarmac. 100%. It's a very difficult challenge. It would definitely be, in terms of the hardest race, like individual event, it's close between Isle of Man TT and 24 Hour Net. I, I'd probably say Isle of Man TT, actually is one of the hardest races in the world. But you still have to think, the most talented drivers in the world are the ones that can take that rally car and take them on multiple different surfaces, being that far away from crashing every single corner and still being able to do it at almost 120 miles an hour top speed. Like, that is the most talented of drivers. Because I can guarantee you, if you were to send every Isle of Man TT driver, told them to ride for 24 hours, you'd have like 100 crashes quite easily. Yeah, the Nord, Nord Slife is fucking death trap. So the cars behind have also pitted as well, so it paid off. The gamble, I mean, to be fair, even if they didn't pit, we still caught up and overtook them before they took their pit stop, so we would have been fine even if they didn't pit. All that power, the clock's ticking, I just count the hours. It's actually quite warm in here now. See, that's... For anyone who doesn't live in the UK, um, you will never understand the problem with our houses. So... Everyone from different countries will always say, Oh, why do Brits always complain about the summer? Their summer's so cold. No, we're not complaining about the summer because when it's warm outside and there's a breeze, you know, it's nice, it's comfortable. When you're inside is the problem and a lot of people work indoors in the UK. So you're inside a building that it... Most buildings in the UK are designed specifically to keep heat in. They're designed with most of British weather, nine months of the year, basically. So they're designed for those nine months where it's cold to keep the heat in. I've had the window open, right? I've got this fan on, but all this tech in here, the heat that's being generated, stays inside. It's designed to stay inside. It can be almost 35 degrees inside a house in the UK while it's 30 degrees outside. It's designed to keep more of the heat in. And it's stupid. And yeah, we don't have air conditioning. So I just have a fan that's also blowing 30 degree fucking air around. Today's not as warm, but it's obviously getting to the end of the day where the end of the day is always the warmest because the sun's been out the whole fucking day. It's fucking hot, lad! Imagine being a fucking 80s F1 car at qualifying spec at the Nürburgring. 2100 horsepower that could blow up at any point with enough turbo lag to put you to sleep before you end up backwards. Jesus Christ. Is that how much power those F1 cars had? I thought the modern ones were the most powerful they've been with like 1200 horsepower. I still find it mind-blowing that we have Formula 1 with like almost over a thousand horsepower engines and yet the cars... 
Jesus. And yet the cars that we have nowadays in Formula One, you look at, say, a Bugatti Veyron, right? That had a thousand horsepower. Right, it had seven gears, it weighed two and a half tons, and it got to 250 miles an hour. Right, on on Baku straight, I can guarantee you that Bugatti Veyron would hit 220. We've got Formula One cars nowadays that are much lighter, more powerful, have an extra gear, better aerodynamics, and yet they still struggle to hit 210 on Baku straight. What the hell? Well, I understand it's all drag and whatnot, but why don't they make the cars go faster on the straights? Formula drift while it's pouring rain. Nah, I couldn't imagine drifting in the rain. I'd just fucking die. But the thing is, e even drifting, like, drifting is a, a talented thing, but once you've got understand your car, it's predictable. Because the circuit is the same. The circuit's gonna be the same, the car's gonna be the same. It's a very predictable sport. WRC, as soon as a car goes there, there's no telling where that massive rock that you've just driven over is gonna go for the next driver to drive over. There's no way to tell how the terrain's going to fall apart and whatnot. It's insane. How ta like... That's why there's, there's no driver more talented than a WRC driver. And I fucking love WRC. I love Dirt Rally as well. I'm, I'm looking forward to WRC 23. Fucking EA is going to be getting a fuck ton of my money this year. Because they've got money from me for... Um... What's it called? Oh, they're going to take more money for EA Play this month as well. Because I'm going to pay another 20 quid of that to get that for another year. But obviously I want it. Because there's actually some good games on EA Play. People that shit on EA, I, I don't understand people that religiously shit on EA. Like, I'm not a fan of EA myself either, sometimes. I, I don't think some of the things that EA has is good. For example, FIFA. FIFA should be an 18. Because it's got gambling and loot boxes. That should be an 18 game. Obviously, it's not going to be, but it has loot boxes, so it's gambling. It should be an 18. Same with Apex Legends, that should be an 18. It's got gambling in it. It's got loot boxes. But, at the same time... EA hasn't made a game... Other than, I think, Anthem. Where you've gone and looked at it and gone, That's so dreadful. What, what the actual fuck, you know. It's there, oh. Like, I think people just are, are too quick to jump on this bandwagon of, oh, fuck you Ubisoft, fuck you EA, fuck you Kobasters, fuck you whatever. Yeah, Anthem could have been amazing, to be fair. I played a little bit of it and I was like, what the hell is this? But like, I I don't understand. Too many people are too interested in the wrong things when it comes to video games. And I think it's a gamer's fault. As a, a gaming community, like, gamers are to blame. Not developers. Because what, what do us gamers always go at when we look at a new game? Oh my gosh, look at the graphics, it's so good. Like, I am currently playing Forza Motorsport 3, a game that came out 14 years ago, right? Look at this, do you think this looks terrible? No, it actually still looks pretty decent. It looks good, 
I'm playing it. I'm enjoying playing it. But do you know what? Do you know what it isn't? It isn't 4K. And it's still good. You look at Gran Turismo 7, a game that's focused on making their cars look as high quality as possible. And yeah, it looks cool for a bit. But do you know what it isn't? It isn't a fun game to play. But you look back at Gran Turismo 4, a game that literally ran at 576i. It wasn't even progressive scan, it was interlaced footage. And that game is a million times better than GT7. Like... Gamers are focusing on the wrong things, and developers are like, we must please this. I can guarantee you, right, if for the next, say for example the next Gran Turismo, they focus on 1080p only. If they make that game 1080p, but they make it run smooth and add all this, these cool gameplay features, people would prefer it more. It's not become a crutch, though. That's the problem. Like, developers have to make it look high quality so that when they do the trailers, the game looks good. Right? So people will go, wow, that looks good. And then they'll buy it. But then the gameplay is terrible because of the fact that they've gone wow at this game. But the problem is, there are games out there that haven't had that treatment of making it look 4K and yet they've done terribly because people were too focused uh, that the gameplay is good but they're too focused on the quality and I got a great example for you anyone played Hi-Fi Rush? Hi-Fi Rush is an animated style game right doesn't even need to run at 4K but the gameplay is phenomenal right more games like that so thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like comment down below and subscribe and i will see you in the next one peace out